Good morning from Tokyo. Uh, it's Monday morning and as I said in my previous day, I'm going to be doing some video game buildings today. I am shocked that the whole time I've been looking at this very interesting building and I didn't really know how to put my finger on it. I'm like, I think I know what this, uh, this looks familiar from a video I've seen, but I didn't know what it was. I'm going to show you, bear with me. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in on the building. It's, as you can see, that one just there. Something about it looks so familiar to me. That is Square Enix headquarters, where they are known for Dragon Quest, um, and they're also known for publishing a bunch of games, but the main thing they're known for is Final Fantasy, and literally next month, within a month, Final Fantasy VII Remake, which has been anticipated for years and years and years, not by people, like, not my, by myself, but by lots of people, that's coming out. So I'm going to be going there. There is... You can't go into the offices, which is going to be the case with a lot of the places I go to today. But Square Enix does have a cafe and a shop, and they have figurines and stuff. So if there's anything I see that I like, I might pick up. Um, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Like I said, not the biggest Square Enix fan, but we'll go from there. Uh, but we're going to come, I think, to that one last because it's so close to where I am. I'm going to try and go out of the way and then come back down towards my hotel. So do a, like, a round trip. That'll probably be my last building for the day so I'll meet you at the first place hello so uh, at my first building not much to see really it's just it's just an office complex with multiple businesses in there however one of them and I'm not allowed in because it's employees only I'm just gonna crawl from outside the building but on one of these or multiple of these floors above me is Tango Gameworks. Tango Gameworks, if you don't know, is a company set up by the godfather of survival horror, Shinji Mikami, who is also known as the creator of Resident Evil or Biohazard. He left during development of Resident Evil 5, I believe, about further away through that at most, set up this company. Funnily enough, Bethesda bought the company, so they own that part of up there is owned by Bethesda. And uh, they are known for the Evil Within and the Evil Within 2, or as they're known in Japan, Psycho Break. And they are currently working on one of my most anticipated games, which is Ghostwire Tokyo, which after seeing how lovely the city is, it will be amazing to walk around it in a horror atmosphere. More supernatural than zombies and stuff like that, like they're used for, used to, but still very, very cool in its own way. The other cool thing to me, is that Shinji Mikami, or Mikami-san, if you're Japanese, could very well be in this building right now, which is very, very cool to me. It's a shame I can't meet him. I'd love to meet him. He's about 50-something years old, so he's been in the industry for about 20-plus years, but really cool that I'm, you know... The most annoying thing is there's no direct sign saying Tango Gameworks. I did look at the kanji as well, because I've got the kanji and then the English below it, and nothing matches up so you must have to go in and then pick a floor and i can't obviously go in but really really cool that it's it's here it's a bit out of the way and there was a lot of business people around this this is definitely an office area like every skyscraper you see around me is probably just offices in fact one behind me just where is it that one there you might not be able to read it that's toyota i don't know whether there's a head office but it's a office for toyota so very office focused area where people are clearly just come here, travel to work and then go home. Um, but still very, very cool. Shinji is the director of the company, I believe the CEO, but the talent he has below him is very young. Like I think mid twenties is the youngest. So they've pretty much come out of university or college here and they've come to work at Tango and he's leading, leading them around and guiding them with obviously his expertise in the industry and his knowledge of survival horror games and everything but really really cool that literally potentially 20 something floors up they are working on Ghostwire and I'd have a feeling they haven't confirmed it but I'd be willing to bet they're also working on The Evil Within or Psycho Break free really really cool it's a shame i can't go in and have a tour or anything that's the that's the worst thing about this is that i can't go in and have a tour and it's gonna be a bit boring today i think for, for most people is like oh look i'm here at this skyscraper where people are working but this means a lot to me personally it just knowing that people who are making some of my favorite games right now or in the past are literally here like they it's it's a monday morning a late monday morning they're there 
they're in that building working hard right now and it's it's a shame i can't go up and meet them and say thank you for all your hard work and for all the memories and the entertainment over the years so you know what can you do that's what conventions are for i guess it's <laughs> very very cool very very cool so uh, i'm going on to the next building and the last one i'm going to go to is square enix like i said earlier in the video square enix has a hq they don't have a tour but they have a lot more to offer than tango unfortunately very cool to know that they are up there right now working working their backsides off on Ghostwire Tokyo and Evil Within 3 and just having making passionate good video games. I'm going to find out what the next one is closest to me wise. We're going to go there and uh, I'll catch up with you when we get there. the money coming out of my pocket already. Oh, here we go. <laughs>
need to go to an ATM <laughs> but uh, yeah really cool it's a night. I went right through this building when I went to Shibuya a few days ago right through it never knew about it it's, to find it is either you have to google it or you have to look at the signs that literally tell you what's on each floor which is mental I literally would have walked right past this and never found this place had I yeah just what like yeah crazy yeah, absolutely mental absolutely mental i'm going to be heading to my next destination now not even sure where that is to be honest but um yeah grab some money first i'm gonna have a look in the pokemon shop even though i'm not a pokemon guy i'll have a look and see what there is there but i probably won't be honest not just because i haven't got money right now but in general i probably won't get anything because i ain't the biggest pokemon fan don't hate it it just never did anything for me so anyway i'll head over there and see what there is you never know
I'm back in my room. So, what I recorded of the Square Enix burning from the front is on the other, the, the, the other side of that part. So the little bit you're seeing at the top there, that's where I was on the other side. I tried to record inside the building, but the problem was the security pretty much as soon as they saw me recording were like, oh, can you, can you not? And I was honestly didn't see a sign or anything till after they said and pointed it out. So I was like, oh no, no, my apologies. Uh, they were understanding about it. They probably knew I didn't friggin see a sign or anything because I, d I just didn't genuinely. I wanted to record outside of the building, but the wind is absolutely ridiculous. I've, you may see the camera sort of shake like that because no shit, I'm having to, I was having to steady myself like you're seeing, hopefully. I was having to steady myself like one foot in front of the other like that just waiting across the road before i took that shot of the building it's absolutely ridiculously windy today i don't know why i mean there's been windy days like since i've been here where a little bit of wind will hit you and you're like oh, okay fine but it's been relentless since i pretty much since i got out of that capcom shop it's just been relentlessly windy i don't know why it's just the gale, it's gale force winds. It makes our uh, our storms we had in February look like a pushover because it was so much windier today. Like I had, and then the bags are doing that and I'm, my arms are going all over the place. And I've just, it got to the point where I tried to hold the camera. There's a few uh, bit videos I'm just not gonna use where I'm holding the camera and I'm literally, I can't control the camera and the bag at the same time and I've got my backpack on. So it really did hinder how much I could record. What I will say is I don't have any footage of it just simply because it was blowing my goddamn head off and you couldn't record inside it. There is a small little gift shop and also a uh, cafe restaurant in the same bit and they've got a Final Fantasy VII remake celebration menu. Didn't see the menu, I just read they had like a set uh, a certain thing to commemorate it's coming out. It looked very nice in there. It, it definitely was the best looking shop. Um, they had an inside fountain and stuff, it was really, really cool. Tons of the figurines from like Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest. Shock Horror, the Final Fantasy VII Remake ones were all sold out. They pretty much, from what I've heard, they don't make many. And it's a case of, here's how, here's how many we have, and that's it. <laughs> They're not probably going to restock them, but there was every single character from Final Fantasy VII Remake. I know a few like Cloud, Sephiroth, Eris, you know, all of them, but I wouldn't be surprised if everyone bought them in bulk. They looked great, they did look really good. The fact they were sold out didn't tell me how much they were but I did see a few other figurines with something along the lines of at least 30 plus thousand yen. So you're pushing about 300 plus pounds for a figurine there. But to be fair, the quality of them is very, very good. So it's kind of swings and roundabouts of, is it worth it? Well, it kind of is if you're a, if you're a Square Enix fan. I didn't get anything from Square Enix, unlike Nintendo and Capcom, because what I found in there was basically all Final Fantasy stuff, which I have no interest in. I'm not... Don't hate Final Fantasy, I just have no interest in it, which is unfortunately what Square's known for. <laughs> they had Kingdom Hearts stuff, but it wasn't that great. I didn't think they had a few Kingdom Hearts statues, but I just didn't, nothing. I, I haven't played Kingdom Hearts to really get it. The Disney Square thing is kind of cool, but yeah. After that, there was some Dragon Quest stuff, which looked interesting. I did was tempted to get, there was just a slime shirt with the slime just like smiling with the, the big bulging eyes in blue like a big blue shirt that looked great but the problem was they only had small available and i've literally in the capcom shop they had little like sample shirts i think they called them but they were basically just on a rack and you could try it see what it looked like as if it was on you like, like not a mannequin but it was kind of like that and they just had sizes so they luckily had larges there which is normally what i go for that's how windy it is that's how windy it is. If you can hear that, if that if that picked up on video, that is why I didn't record much at Square Enix. Or on my way home, or I was gonna do a quick thing like I'm doing now, just say, yeah, you know, I didn't really find anything, but it looks really cool. I couldn't even do that because not only did I have to steady myself, I guarantee the audio, you wouldn't have been able to hear my voice, which is probably a good thing. But still, you wouldn't have been able to hear anything I was saying. You can at least hear it because I'm in the confines of four walls. So the sample ones from the Capcom shop, I tried them, like put them on myself and a large, I knew there'd be a size difference in uh, Asian sizes and 
the UK sizes. So I tried it on and that honestly felt like a medium to me. So luckily the shirts I bought, I was able to find them at uh, XL. So I just went the next size up and I like it to be a little bit baggy when I wear a t-shirt anyway. So it probably it won't be the end of the world. If it is slightly larger than a large than I anticipated, Oh well, I, you know, I'm quite a tall guy, so I'll fit into it fine and dandy. I'll, sh I'll show you guys what I picked up from both shops. Um, I didn't really obviously do many video game buildings because there's only two. Um, I wanted to do Capcom, but that is like, uh, if, I did, if I didn't say, I'll make it clear now. That is in Osaka, so I'm nowhere near it and I can't get to it. And then after that, there's the Nintendo building, but it's just literally a grey building with the Nintendo logo in grey on it. There is nothing, not even a Mario outside or anything. That Nintendo shop is what should have been at that building in my opinion. They could have put that there and then people would have gone to it. Square, I'll give them that, has the right idea. Have their headquarters. There was people going past me with lanyards. I swear to God, they were probably developers. There was probably uh, developers walking past me without realizing making who make Final Fantasy, Dragon Quest, things like that. And then on top of that, they, they have a little gift shop and a cafe. Let me show you what I've got. Try and ignore the wind. There's not much I can really do about it. Um, I'd say Nintendo, I think, wins debatably best bag. Really, really cool. Really, really cool. What I want to say is uh, every single place I've got stuff from, like nine out of ten, nine times out of ten, there's a little bit of tape just around the uh, the bag, which really helped with the friggin' wind earlier. Because if I didn't, I think the, the contents would have just completely gone out down the street, fucking five blocks away, and I'd have had no chance of getting it. So uh, I didn't get too much from uh, Nintendo, to be honest. I didn't really uh, see much I, I wanted, in all honesty. I just got, like the bag, I just got a shirt, which was... Uh, those main four uh, franchises. I thought it was quite cool to be fair. What I do find funny is that it's called Dobutsu no Mori, which is Animal Crossing, and it's Shizu and Mirabitu, which are these two characters. Now, I don't know who this is, but I know for a fact that is Isabel. <laughs> so one of those two names is Isabel in Japanese. There you go. Unless, unless, there is a, there's a point, unless, that is what they are calling them in Japan, and Isabel is what they're known as in America and Europe. So maybe it's a completely different name. Doesn't necessarily mean it will be a translation in that case. And then I got one of these because I'd seen them for a while, but I also wanted one for my sofa. The Hyrule Shield pillow. This was the thing I didn't notice. On the back, it literally, you can... <laughs> I can use it as a shield, that's brilliant. They did also have a Triforce pillow, but these were both about 3,000 yen each, and I was just like, no, I only want the main one, and it's got quite cushion. Plus, I also thought cushioning for something in a case as well, so bonus. Oh, that's really cool. My receipt literally has Mario stuff on the back. I didn't even see that. They just had our advertisements for, like, for Switch, Animal Crossing, but the woman did warn me this is all in Japanese. So I was like, that's fine. But uh, yeah, really, really cool, like a, a handbook. But uh, no, they were really, really good Nintendo, to be fair. They had a nice variety of uh, stuff. Every single franchise was represented well. The only complaint I will say is I didn't, off the top of my head now, didn't see any Metroid stuff, probably because they were promoting Animal Crossing, that's their next big game. And there's also a Zelda in the works. But also, I really was hoping to see Kid Icarus, which is a franchise we've kind of, I've never played it, I'll, I'll be honest, I've never played it, but it's a franchise that I've always heard is really good and it's had like a handful of games since like the Nintendo Entertainment System. <laughs> so it's it's been around since the beginning, just like Metroid, Mario, Zelda. But they've just not done much with it. And they've done a 3DS game when that was announced when like the 3DS was announced, and I think that's it. I typed in Capcom on a whim to find see if there's anything Capcom related, because I went to the Capcom Plaza, as you know, and I asked one of the guys there, I was like, have you got any merchandise, a shop? Like, you know, for biohazard or anything. He's like, no, no, sorry, sorry, we don't, we don't. So I was like, oh, okay. So I, would, I literally just typed in Capcom store on Google Maps and bang, something showed up. And I was just like, what? And it's in the same bit as the Nintendo bit as you saw. And literally it's everything I wanted, minus some remake two and other bits and pieces, but more or less it's exactly what I wanted. They had little pamphlets for uh, Biohazard RE3, I picked one up for a friend. So that's really, really cool. So I got that, those were free, that was that. was that. So I got, this is all Biohazard related stuff, all Resident Evil, simply because 
Mega Man or Rock Man as it's known here, I've not played, I've never been a big fan of. Not that I hated it, I just did it's one of it's like Final Fantasy, I don't hate it, I just don't care for it. Other franchises that were there were Monster Hunter, which I wish I was into Monster Hunter, because there was so much stuff there for it. The biohazard section was very small, but it was it was alright. They used their space well in that little shop. They had tons of Street Fighter stuff, because Street Fighter I'd argue is what they're most known for. Devil May Cry, Okami has a small little section. So they had all these different franchises, really, really cool. But I went for basically Biohazard Resident Evil stuff. So I've got Curry of the Biohazard, have the, the Biohazard Green Herb Curry and Survive. It's a curry mix that is Green Herb Curry. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'll uh, I'll give that a, a whirl. I'll give that a cook when I get home. And then I got these for myself, uh, my friends and brother. I got umbrella tablet candy. It's basically a sweet that you put on your tongue and they melt, but it's in a tablet holder. Like you unscrew it for your tablets and stuff. It looks like that. So as soon as I saw that, I thought that's brilliant. So I got one for me, one for my brother, and then two friends, which were really, really cool. I got this as well basically they had a capcom cafe i believe but it's, it was only temporary from what i heard to commemorate 20th anniversary of biohazard they did these little mugs so you got, you got your nemesis uh ada leon a zombie uh i don't know who that is off the top of my head i want to say it's chris that might be jill actually yeah chris yeah jill chris wesker and i think claire <laughs> But it's like in a birthday cake style mug. I just thought that was really, really cool. And then the majority of my stuff is shirts. My mum will kill me, but I don't care. Can't really get them out of the wrapper. I want to try and keep them in it. Um, Capcom Store Tokyo, which I think on the back has some stuff. Um, they only had large, so I'm hoping large is good enough. Like I said, I didn't want to get one that was too small or anything. Randomly, you've got, I won't get them out, but Biohazard Zero, which is Resident Evil Zero, and you've got Billy and Rebecca on there. I don't know why they randomly have Biohazard Zero. And then I like it, even though a lot of people don't, which is Biohazard Five. And I just thought that's absolutely brilliant. So I've got both of those. They were the only two Biohazard shirts. They didn't have any Ferrari free or two, or even Remake. I would have gladly picked one up for Remake, but they didn't even have one of them. And then I just got, it's a Capcom uh, store, another Capcom store shirt. We've got every single franchise on it. I think Chris is on there for Resident Evil. Obviously I can't, I'm not really gonna get these out just because they're so tightly compact. I don't want to get them out and potentially add more weight or scruff them or any of that. I've got a pack in a couple of days, like I said. So that's really all I got today from that stuff. I didn't get anything from Square, and I didn't get, uh, obviously Tango didn't have a shop, so I didn't get anything from there. But still, really, really cool. So I'm going to start packing my bags, grab something to eat, I think, and uh, I will catch you guys on the flip side. And uh, we, I'll record anything I do tonight. Go from there. See you in the next bit.